Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about cloud gaming with Shadow. To begin, I'm going to go over a quick setup guide on how to get started with Shadow. And moving on from there, I'm going to cover the hardware inside of the Shadow machine. And finally, to wrap things up, I'm going to do some quick synthetic benchmarks to give you a rough idea of the performance that the Shadow machine will pack. So without further delay, let's go ahead and get right to it. The setup process for the, your shadow machine is in, incredibly simple. When you first boot up your shadow machine for the first time, you'll be brought to a setup page uh, asking you to sign into an existing Microsoft account or to create a new one. And Microsoft is very persistent about trying to get you to use an online based account rather than a local Windows account. Uh, but you could certainly still use a local account if you so choose to. Uh, there are some benefits though to using a Microsoft account, which I'll get to later on in the video, uh, but really the choice is up to you on which type of account that you use. Uh, after you have created your account or signed into an existing account, you'll be have a couple of other pages with some uh, configuration settings, and then it'll create your profile on the local machine. After you, your profile has been created on your shadow machine, it'll be asking you for the passwords that you created or your existing password, of course. Uh, and a quick note here, you will have to enter that password every time you boot up your shadow machine. There are some cloud gaming providers that automatically walk, go through the Windows login process behind the scenes, but with shadow, you do have to enter that password every time. So I just do wanted to mention that if, you have, if you're coming from a different cloud gaming provider. Moving on from here, you'll be brought to your desktop and it'll look very similar to what my desktop looks like right now. And you'll see the shadow control panel. This is a very min minimalistic uh, control panel. There isn't a lot to tinker with here. And as someone that has used cloud gaming for well over a year now, having some of the advanced features to tinker with is cool. Uh, just simply to see how far the software and the, the client software will really, really go to try to push a little bit more graphical fidelity out of it. Uh, or something along those lines and just, just tinker with it, it's kind of cool. I do understand why they went with a, as simple as possible, simply just to make the experience as smooth as possible. So I do have a quick note here though on the bandwidth uh, slider. When I was playing, when I was doing my initial testing and first impressions, uh, this was right after Shadow launched in the US, so it could have just been growing pains, but I tried playing at 50 megabit per second uh, connection and it was not a great experience. It was a good experience, but not a great experience. I actually have a have a much better experience playing at 30 megabit per second, uh, which is what I generally have been playing at. I will test this later in about a week or two just to see if that was just like initial growing pains. Maybe there's a ton of people trying out the service right off the bat when it when it had launched in the U.S. Uh, so I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and try to test that out later. I definitely should not be my internet connection as I, as I have a gigabit downstream connection. And I always monitor my local uh, machine to just make sure that it's the client software isn't pushing my machine too hard simply because I do have an i7 uh, processor and a Radeon 380 on my machine that I use to record uh, and edit all the videos that I do. Um, so if it's pushing my local machine hard, I know it's definitely going to be pushing uh, older machines like with an i3 processor and that's where like cloud gaming is going to be great on older machines as well as newer machines so i want to make sure when i'm doing all my benchmarking and my testing that it's not pushing my local machine too hard and shadow was not even at streaming 50 megabit per second it wasn't pushing my machine hard at all so i don't know what the issue was i just know there was an issue but i will give shadow the benefit of the doubt and we'll look at that deeper here in the future but I, since this is just my first impressions i did want to mention that and if you have a little bit of issues maybe try backing off that bandwidth to something along the lines of 30. Uh, even though it shouldn't be my data connection, it could be something funky going on. Maybe they just didn't have enough throughput at their data center. And maybe they have or, or are in the process of dealing with it now. And we'll ha that'll be something that'll be cleared up here in a week or two. All right, so moving on to the hardware specs inside of our shadow machine. So you can see on the CPU side that we're running an Intel Xeon processor with four cores, eight threads, and running at a clock frequency of 2.1 gigahertz. Before I dig into any of the other hardware specs, I did want to talk about the clock frequency a little bit more in depth. So generally speaking, server-grade CPUs have focused more on num the number of cores and threads at the sacrifice of the clock speed. On the flip side, desktop processors have generally focused more on having a higher clock uh, frequency, but at the expense of having less cores and less threads at their disposal. That was at least until AMD's Ryzen platform kind of came in and completely turned that upside down by introducing eight core 
16 thread CPUs that are very affordable for you know general consumer uh, gaming rigs. However, prior to that, most gaming rigs probably had about four core CPUs with either four to eight threads on the CPU side. But since that has been the norm on the gaming rig side for many, many years, game developers have been making the move to ut fully utilizing more cores versus focusing simply on a high clock uh, frequency CPU. That is good news for cloud gaming and they're definitely gonna continue that move as the number of cores in our machine is definitely gonna be the focus on the CPU uh, market as that seems to be much easier to uh, you know, advance in than you know, getting clock frequencies above you know, around five gigahertz or more. Uh, it seems to be much easier to increase the number of cores. So game developers are gonna increasingly take advantage of more cores in, in their game engines. However, the, certain games still aren't well optimized for multiple cores, and especially older games before multiple core machines were the norm, uh, aren't gonna run as well on cloud gaming rigs simply because they are running at much lower clock frequencies. All right, so moving on to the rest of the hardware that makes up our Shadow PC. And you can see here on the memory side, we have 12 gigabytes of RAM, and that's definitely gonna be sufficient for our gaming use cases. If you were kind of eyeing the Shadow as a, a machine, cloud machine for professional workloads such as video editing, uh, 3D CAD, or 3D modeling, or something along those lines, 12 gigabytes of RAM is gonna be a little bit on the lower end, but depending on your workload and what exactly you're doing, it still might be sufficient for you to utilize uh, the Shadow PC for professional workloads. Moving on to the disk, there's not a lot to talk about here outside of the fact that it has a 250 gigabyte storage drive. I do wish this was a little bit larger or that we had the ability to pay a little bit more and upgrade this to a larger drive. But uh, moving on to the internet speeds, you can see here that with a gigabit downstream connection, if you ran out of storage and had to uninstall a game, uh, especially with cloud ba save backups, like I know Steam does that, I'm sure some other platforms do too, uh, or you could always have your, your save directory be backed up on like a Google Drive or a OneDrive or a Dropbox, you know, connection. That way, if you had to uninstall a game, you don't lose all your saves. Uh, or if you're just playing an online game, it doesn't matter anyways. But anyways, uh, having a super fast da downstream connection with a gigabit per second, if you do have to uninstall a game and re-download a game, it's not going to cut into your gaming time too much simply because games are going to download lightning fast. Uh, so moving on to the final piece of hardware, but also the star of our machine and that is the GPU. And the GPU, as you can see here, is a NVIDIA Quadro P5000. Uh, the Quadro P5000 is pretty much equivalent to a GTX 1080, with the big exception being the amount of VRAM. The Quadro P5000 has 16 gigabytes of VRAM, whereas the GTX 1080 has eight gigabytes of VRAM. For gaming use cases, this isn't gonna to be too useful, uh, simply because all that extra VRAM isn't gonna be needed, especially at 1080p. Uh, but NVIDIA did update their EULA at the beginning of the year stating that consumer grade cards can no longer be used in data centers. And I do believe that Shadow originally launched their service in France, I believe, uh, with GTX 1080s instead of Quadros. It doesn't make a lot of sense for gaming to have a Quadro versus a GTX 1080, but since that's what NVIDIA's EULA says and Shadow not wanting to break that, and for possible fear, I don't know legal ramifications. I don't know exactly what would happen if they did break that, um, but they pretty much had to make the move to the Quadro cards simply because that's what NVIDIA is saying. I don't 100% agree with that uh, statement from NVIDIA uh, about the the GTX cards not being, shouldn't be used in uh, data centers. I do know they're not exactly designed for that, but I also know that NVIDIA is working on their own cloud gaming setup. And since providers like Shadow have to move to Quadro, they're essentially having to pay double the price for the GPU as they, as they were paying, even with the inflated cost of GPUs. So it kind of puts them at a little bit of disadvantage when trying to go up against a giant such as NVIDIA uh, in terms of the, you know, our future of cloud gaming. Uh, but I digress, and that's a, more of a topic for a completely separate video. But as you can see here, that's pretty much the entire layout of the specs of the shadow machine. All right, so for the final segment of today's video, I wanted to run a synthetic benchmark utilizing 3D Mark and running the Firestrike benchmark. I chose Firestrike over the newer Time Spy benchmark simply because I've already ran Firestrike on some of the other cloud gaming platforms. So I wanted the data from today's video to be directly comparable to the information that I already had available from my earlier benchmarks. 
So on that note, I was expecting the Shadow Machine to be very comparable to the P5000 hardware tier from Paperspace for, because they're running very similar hardware specs. Both are running the same GPU with the NVIDIA Quadro P5000. Both have four CPU cores with eight threads. And the major di hardware difference between the two is the Paperspace Machine does have 30 gigabytes of RAM versus 12 gigabytes. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, the 12 gigabytes of RAM is gonna be definitely sufficient for gaming purposes. And I don't foresee we, us having any issues with 12 gigabytes of RAM, at least for the foreseeable use cases in gaming. The only possibilities possibly if you're trying to stream from the cloud possibly, or something along those lines where you might actually run into an issue where 12 gigabytes of RAM might become a limit or if you're trying to uh, utilize some non-gaming applications such as 3d cad or 3d design software or video editing where 12 gigabytes of ram actually might be a hindrance to your workflow so on that note the results and i did run the 3d mark test several times just to make sure there wasn't any uh so, so something weird going on that was causing the scores to be lower uh, on average, it was about 150 points less with the Shadow Machine than the Paperspace P5000 hardware tier, with the major difference being the physics score was always at least 1,000 points less than the Paperspace Machine. And this is probably attributed to the fact that the Paperspace Machine does run at a higher base clock frequency than the Shadow Machine at a 2.6 gigahertz base clock versus a 2.1 gigahertz base clock for the Shadow Machine. And that could have attributed to the fact that it did have a lower physics score. But in terms of graphics, the graphics actually averaged slightly higher on throughout my test. Uh, and, but the end result was about 150 points difference on average. Now taking into fact the total score and that difference, you're only talking about a couple percent difference in terms of overall comparison. So I don't expect this, this, us to actually see much of a difference in real world benchmarks. Uh, in games, maybe a FPS two or two less in more CPU bound games possibly. But I don't really see foresee too much of a difference between the Shadow Machine and the Paper Space P5000 hardware tier, which is actually pretty good news. If you want to watch all my other, uh, older videos, I have tested several games and have tested the P5000 hardware tier on those games. A uh, big one that I've tested very thoroughly is Players and Own Battlegrounds, and that runs very good on the P5000 hardware tier. You do have to drop the settings down a little bit, but I don't know if there's a computer out there that can run PUBG with everything cranked out max and still have a perfect experience uh, because it's not simply well optimized even after the 1.0 release so on that note i expect that the shadow machine is going to run very well i don't foresee too much of a difference between this and the paper space machine in our future benchmarks but i will be testing shadow in every future benchmark video that i do on different games i am working on rainbow six siege right now so that would probably be the next video i have out i've already tested paper space and liquid sky so I just need to test Shadow and then I'll be ready to finish up that video, uh, make my slides for the actual benchmark scores, and then record my thoughts. So it might be a week or two before I finally get that video finished after I benchmark Shadow, but it should be coming in the very near future. So if you're a Siege fan, uh, look out for that in the near future. All right, so that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. If you found this video helpful and you otherwise liked it, give it a big like. I greatly appreciate that. Also, if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to leave those in the comments below, and I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Also, if you have any games you want me to test with Shadow, make sure to leave those in the comments below too, and I'll try to add those to my list. I will be making Shadow a, a constant in all further cloud gaming testing I will be doing, along with Liquid Sky, as well as Papers Place plus Parsec. Uh, so keep an eye out for that in the future too. Uh, and once again, thanks for watching guys and until next time, Zach out.